All right, put that in my pocket. Do I look fat? Good afternoon, everybody. No, just kidding. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name's Parker Stutzman. Uh, this is Stutzman's Garage. This is our first video. Uh, I've wanted to create a YouTube channel for a long time now. And, um, you know, previously I was living in a different place and I didn't have a lot of space. Now I actually have a bigger garage that I can actually do a couple more projects in and actually start working on things. Uh, this car was created uh, in a one car garage. I had trouble getting far enough away from the vehicle in order to get uh, great shots of it. So made it made filming really difficult. I also just, you know, had trouble building up the crew in order to get all the video together for me um, and trying to start that channel on top of school and on top of work was just almost impossible. But um, this is or was a 1995 Mazda Miata. Uh, obviously, everybody who's a Mazda fan, you're going to recognize the iconic engine. This one is absolutely filthy. Turns out painting an engine white is not the best idea. Now, I thought that an engine being exposed outside of the car to the elements would have stayed a little cleaner. Well, when you have to replace spark plugs and uh, spill oil on it, it turns out that uh, cleanliness is not its forte. I was inspired by a lot of the builds where you see a lot of the YouTube builders, they are uh, building exo cars. And I thought it would be best to start with something small, something light. Uh, I know I have the Hooningen sticker on there. They have their shark cart uh, that they built. And this is not modeled after it. You can tell theirs is much different. Uh, and I've seen a couple other YouTubers who do even more minimalistic builds. You can see some of the kits they sell online where the, the bars come down real close to the front. There's not a lot of uh, head space on this vehicle for everything. I think when I did design it, I tried to extend the wheelbase a little bit, not cutting in the middle, but kind of stretching the front end out, keeping it at kind of the OEM spec length. Uh, also widening the vehicle by adding wider tires to it and expanding the width of the vehicle by a good uh, two inches on either side when it comes to body work. Uh, this vehicle was purchased in uh, Northeast Arkansas. Uh, I drove it five hours across the state sight unseen. I show up to this guy's house and he is selling a Miata for a thousand dollars. And I don't know if you guys pay attention to Miata resale values, but they're kind of like when even the worst of the worst examples is still a Miata and two thousand, three thousand dollars is what people want to sell them for because the Miata chassis is such a great road racing car um, and people beat the crap out of them until they blow up, right? And even when they blow up, they can still manage to find a $600 engine to throw back in it. It's cheaper than buying another one, right? So I uh, found this one for $1,000, absolute steal. It ran, it had a spare tire. I had this stack of tires behind you that it came with. Uh, and there's another set of wheels under here as well behind the lawnmower. Those are much smaller. I think those are 14s. These were 15s. And then I put, I believe I put 15s on here as well. Yeah, so these are also 15s. These seats were the most expensive thing on this car. Um, I think that's good for safety. You obviously want to not die when you're already driving a Exocart Miata. While this Miata was only $1,000, it had great bones. I mean, for the most part, I didn't need anything on it. <laughs> I knew going into that Miata build that this is what I wanted to do with it. Um, it is very, very easy build for the most part because there's no flat panels. You're not doing any steel fabrication work for uh, any, any curves. The only thing I really did was some of these pieces down here. But uh, going back to the structure, I mean, you're just really cutting everything down to the unibody. So, I mean, the, really, you're using the main core supports here and here and then uh, the main core supports in the rear and you're cutting abs absolutely everything around that off. Uh, we try to keep the strut towers in place, kind of keep some of the metal around it and then do some reinforcements. Cutting all the body panels off this vehicle took about two months. Uh, I took about 700 pounds off the car and then I ended up adding quite a bit of weight back to the vehicle. I, 
I estimate the total weight is between 17 and 1800 pounds. Uh, a lot of the weight came out from extra components, uh, complete air conditioning delete, complete um, minimization of structural components, we knowing they were gonna be replaced by the steel components on this full roll cage. Um, this is built to uh, SCCA specs, so I'm using the correct gauge of steel. Uh, the primary loops are all uh, heavier gauge steel than these other components here. There are a few, these major loops are the heavier gauge. These are the light, so it's a 0 0.093 inch thickness for those uh, thicker pieces. And I think I go down to a 0 0.075 for some of the thinner items. For example, the rear crash bar and items like that. Coming around to the back of the vehicle, uh, you can see that this entire component while questioning what it might be, it serves two purposes. Not that we've run it through an air tunnel test, we've taken the best knowledge I have of uh, aerodynamics and tried to incorporate it here more for a look. Uh, there is functionality associated with this. Like I said, this vehicle is not finished and there are some, still some minor adjustments. As you can see, I've retained a lot of the uh, original unibody structure that's uh, on this vehicle. Anything behind the wheels is now gone off the Miata. The Miata used to come out to probably right around here, actually maybe a little bit farther. So we've deleted all of that structure, all of that unibody, even right about here is where the canopy and the trunk lid starts on a Miata. So it, come, it does come out quite a ways. And then that um, top will actually fold down into this section. So it comes came up about this high, cut all of that structure off. Um, so tire car here, this is what remains. And so I've added two steel tubes here, kind of incorporated into that unibody. Um, so this is the primary structure of the vehicle. This is not what I'm relying on when a uh, Suburban rear ends me. So this, these two big steel tubes, along with the traditional Miata frame are ideally here to, to and take a lot of that impact. Now this section here, not to be discarded, is essentially a crunch zone. Now, if a Suburban hits me, this is probably gonna be what is gonna push the Miata forward a little bit, get me going slowly. I expect this to be completely destroyed. They're gonna to have to send me a new license plate and I don't wanna to have to pay for it, but I will. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna to have to drive this car again, I guess. But this is all built of steel sheets that I've taken. I cut and wrapped around the edge here. Welding all of this was definitely a learning experience. The, the thin metal was a, was a pain to weld and definitely warping was an issue. Unfortunately, with the way I built it, anything over here is not gonna warp too bad, but down through the middle section here, I tried to incorporate a bend into it, like a wing, so that uh, it was a little more forgiving when it came to that structure. Um, of course, adding a piece of rubber along this edge is gonna definitely help us in the future, make it look a little cleaner and also pull it out away from the white metal, give you a, this black contrast will look good. Um, this is the mother of all splitters. This splitter here uh, can suck this car to the ground at 30 miles an hour. I'm just joking. I, it is a very interesting design. It does make it look very extreme, like a uh, time attack vehicle to, the, to some extent. Definitely, there are time attack vehicles that would be jealous of a splitter like this. Unfortunately, the air that is coming out from under the car may come out a little too low. This isn't the most low pro profile splitter, but it is adjustable. So while your splitter may not work as well as you hope, you can use these strut bars, both on these sides, and actually rotate this piece almost a full 45 degrees up. Uh, this gives you an insane amount of downforce if there wasn't turbulence from behind the glass, but it does make it look a little more aggressive. It also makes the car slightly shorter. Not that that's important at all, but I really love the way this came out and the way it looks, even as rough it is as it is. Uh, again, this was a $1,000 Miata. I'm not trying to build a SEMA show car, but um, I think this is a really cool look. It also, a lot of those builds you saw online, they, they kind of came back uh, to about here and they kind of ended. And if you look at the car from a little farther away, the overall length kind of looked a little funky. The front end's a little too long. I could have brought it in about an inch, but uh, overall, I think that adds a big design change to the, the unibody Miata that I, I personally like, uh, adds that foot of length to the vehicle. Now getting rid of that, while this creates as much downforce as it does weigh, getting rid of the weight would be insanely helpful. Now to do that, I've made it very easy. I've actually, 
the entire rear end comes off with just a uh, trailer disconnect. So this is essentially trailer lights at this point, and I can unclip that, take four bolts off, this comes away from the car. This cuts down about 85 pounds off the weight of the vehicle, which is a big deal. Um, but again, this replaced about 85 pounds. Definitely more functional than it was, but it's still very interesting. Moving on to the interior. This is the best part of the vehicle because it is the least finished. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of potential here. Aftermarket steering wheel, uh, $35. Uh, relays to make the LED taillights not blink so fast, but still blink too fast, $15. Uh, and then, of course, the pinnacle of the interior, which is the OEM display with LED replacement gauges because the other gauges... I didn't know how fast I was going. I don't know how fast I'm going. <laughs> but now I do. But now I don't know how hot it is either. At least this works great. Uh, I have a check engine light always on. I don't know if maybe it's not supposed to be. Let's move on up here to the front of the car. Um, this is where some of the major changes happen that a lot of people won't notice. Uh, I have no idea yet how people do the minimalistic um, engine bays where there are absolutely no wires visible. I'm learning that the hard way, that it is not as easy as you thought. But let me show you some of the things I did do. Uh, definitely to clean up the Miata engine bay, we, they had the very small black power steering fluid um, canister here. This was replaced by this aftermarket racing canister. It is bolted in. It does move a little bit. The hose actually goes straight down through the subframe, which is kind of a cool design. And then we have the second hose, which comes up here to the front and feeds this smaller cooler, uh, which I think is a very cool design in and of itself, but I'm very proud of that. Um, another thing to do to, that I did change is this air intake system. Uh, I do have a filter coming for it, but it feeds around here right into the original mass airflow sensor. This mass airflow sensor is based on my calculations and design is about the same distance as it was. It is slightly closer. Typically it's about here, but because of the increased diameter, the lower flow rate, I've moved it forward slightly by about three, two to three inches, uh, which gives it a more accurate reading as, as far as where it was uh, originally. So there's no tune on the vehicle. We haven't done any replacements, but um, I do believe it needs a new mass airflow sensor. It has all new spark plugs, new leads, while they do look dirty. Um, one thing that, uh, another thing that I did change was we have uh, these headlights and a turn signal right here. So I, I fabricated a piece of metal, painted it black. This is the 1.8 liter uh, engine. So we are capable of making a little more power. I do plan on eventually, if everything goes well, I'm, I haven't decided because I can take this engine, I can put $3,000 into it doing a turbo kit, a uh, mega squirt kit, and doing it the right way. I can put $800 into it, doing it the wrong way, blowing up the engine, having fun doing it. But do I wanna engine swap it? You'll see that this has plenty of power to do whatever you need. Um, even though there is a little lag in the engine and I don't think all the power is there, I do believe the mid-range is lacking a little bit of uh, fuel, maybe runs a little lean through the mid-range. I do believe that is because of an O2 sensor issue. Um, but right now the belt does squeak, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a bolt on the alternator so that we can at least enjoy driving around without a belt. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.